In the video you are about to watch, you will learn two things. Number one, that no matter the physical size, fame, or popularity of a monument, anything, absolutely anything, can be forgotten. And number two, that for over 400 years, everyone has been calling one of the most popular mountains in the country by a name that is completely made up. One that was originally intentioned for something else. No one has ever been corrected, and I've never seen anyone ever even mention it. This is a story about misinformation, and how a single event can change the course of history and contribute greatly to an argument happening centuries after its fictitious inception. These are the mountains that time forgot. In Western Wales, in the heart of the countryside, far away from the English border, and in a region where most of the population speaks Welsh, there is a mountain standing high above the rest. And here, amongst the very Welsh peaks of Ardi, Moylan Mawr, and Astavallwen, is a mountain known as Night. But what makes it even weirder is that it's spelt in Old English. The Welsh have their own word for this, Marchog. And the Anglo-Saxons that did use Knit never conquered this region of Wales. We have no idea how it got here. It's first recorded in the year 1480, and according to the historians H. Owen and R. Morgan, there was a family named Knight in the area, but judging by this mountain spelling, it's likely a much older name than that. A peak this distinctive no doubt had an older name, one in Welsh, but whatever this was, it's gone. And it's likely been gone for a while. We don't know why it's called Knicht. It's one of the very few English, let alone old English, place names in the region, and we can't even get any clues on whatever it was before. But while this mountain's etymology can be explained, even if it's miles away from where you'd expect to find it, some aren't so fortunate. The furrowed rents oppose the abrupt but smooth termination of the Blorange. The Blorenge, or Blorenz in Welsh, is an odd name. It's one of the few English nouns to rhyme with orange, and that might not be an accident. According to the historians Owen and Morgan, this hill used to be spelt like Blores until becoming Blorench and eventually Blorange, which they suggest might be due to the quote-unquote influence of orange, which is an amazing concept. Despite this unusual name, unlike Knecht, we actually have no idea what it even means. Back in the day, C.F. Cliff thought that it came from the Welsh blower, meaning grey, and Renge, which I think was supposed to be ridge. However, as we've seen, this is a relatively modern spelling. Owen and Morgan brought up and dismissed another translation based on the older Blores, blower, grey, and ice, the Welsh word for ribs. This fits linguistically, however they note that it doesn't really fit geographically. As I mentioned in that quote, the Blorange is smooth, not ribbed. And looking at this photo, I'm not sure that grey really comes to mind. So what we're left with, then, is a name that's both undescriptive and entirely unexplained. Speaking of the unexplained... Rill is a township in the parish of Rithalan commanding some smooth and firm sand of several miles. Real is the odd one out in this video, as its coastal location could hardly be called a mountain, but that's exactly why it's on here. You see, this name appears to actually be from the English word hill. In the 1290s it was spelled this way, before fusing with the Welsh locals to become Urhill, meaning THE hill, and eventually Real today. One problem though, what hill? Wales is filled with hills, but there aren't any prominent ones here. All the way back in 1905, in the Real Journal, above an advertisement for gout pills, an article author dramatically declared that the meaning of real is as far to me as the east is from the west. Owen and Morgan suggest that there could have been an artificial hill nearby at one time, like a Motton Bailey castle at the mouth of the river, but we can't know for sure. And if such a structure did exist, it's completely disappeared today. So what we have in essence is a Vantum Hill, a hypothetical structure that has completely disappeared, but one that's left a scar that's lasted all the way to today. But while this hill's vanished, leaving its name, there exists one mountain where the exact opposite has happened. In 
It reaches its extreme height in the double-headed summit called the Brecon Beacons, the Van, and by one or two other names. This quote, written over 180 years ago, has, entirely on accident, encapsulated the problem that I'm going to show you today. Banai Brecheniog, named after an old local kingdom, is a mountain range in the south of Wales. In English, these two peaks were anglicised as the Brecknock Beacons and later the Brecon Beacons, which was for a time the name for the entire national park, but the official name was changed back to Welsh a short while ago. If you're wondering, these beacons seem to just be an alliterative pun. I've seen claims that there were some real warning beacons on these hills, but no, Banai just means peaks. Some guy just turned it into beacons 250 years ago. Regardless, the largest summit here, Penavan, and its neighbour, Corn D, have, as the quote says, gone by several names, all of which have fallen completely out of use. As you can see here, this magazine calls on both the van and, again, the Brecon Beacons. Back in the 12th century, though, they were called something much more interesting. Cadar Arthur, Arthur's chair, as in King Arthur. His earliest records, debatably, come from this region, Brecheniog. Although he isn't actually a king here, that comes way later, but I have a whole video on that if you're interested. Regardless, Cadar Arthur was the popular name for these summits. It appears on maps, and according to the historian B. Brady, it was current all the way to the start of the 20th century. The 12th century writer Gerald of Wales also used this name, and he claimed that these peaks were supposed to have magical properties, and that a nearby lake was, to again quote B. Brady, recognise the true heir of the kingship of Wales. This name fell out of fashion though, as did its second name, which I've never seen anyone mention before. Manoth Banuch Deni, which appears alongside Cadar Arthur at the latest in 1720. Unlike Rill, where the name has survived but the hill is gone, here we have a mountain with about four concurrent names, one of which was briefly applied to the entire national park, and of which only one has survived as the modern name of the mountain. I couldn't find a mention as to why Penavan became popular, although if English writers took to name the two highest banai as the peaks or the beacons, then it's not too much of a stretch for the highest mountain to have become the head of the peak. Penavan's also an interesting case not only for having so many names, but for having so many records of them. Several of the other peaks here seem to have only had their names recorded by the late 17 and early 1800s. If they had older or alternate names, we don't know where they were. Penavan seems to have gobbled up all of the records, like an aggressive twin taking all of the nutrients from its siblings in the womb. It's funny one of these old names mention Arthur actually, because there's a particularly interesting place supposedly named after him. One that's been completely lost to history, deep in the mountains of Snowdon. In the mountains of Gwynedd, amongst the shepherds of the 19th century, a very peculiar tale emerged, concerning the death of one of the most famous figures of all time, King Arthur. There are plenty of stories regarding Arthur's death, claiming that he fell in battle or that someday he'll return, but all of those were created much later. If we go back to the first text mentioning this figure, the Historia Britonum, all we find is that he fought 12 battles, ultimately in vain, before he just disappears from the story. Hardly a glamorous end, but these shepherds seem to tell a different tale. According to the historian Rachel Bromwich, this story involved Arthur and his soldiers fighting near the old ruins of Dinas M. Rhys in Gwynedd. They chased their enemy up the mountains but fell into a trap. Arthur was hailed with a volley of arrows on a pass that is still known as Bulch Esaithai, the Pass of the Arrows today. And he died. According to these mountain men, Arthur was laid to rest somewhere amongst these rocks, in a place known as Carnedd Arthur, and his burial was supposed to stop enemy armies from ever marching through the mountain passes again. Carnedd is the Welsh word for cairn, a burial mound, and a mound named after him supposedly did once exist, but what I find interesting is that right in this region, four mountains are named after burial mounds. I don't think it's too far of a stretch, especially coming from people who lived amongst these monumental gravestones, that Arthur could have been buried and associated with one of these mountains, at least according to this story. Whichever one it was though, if any, we have no idea. The name barely made it into the historical record in the first place, and they don't give a proper location. It seems like the shepherds knew something we didn't. Instead, the only Carnethi that we do have are Carneth Llewellyn, David, Ichav slash Gwenllian, and Snowden.
the Carnethi are an odd bunch for one reason. We don't know for certain who they're named after. There is a very famous ruler of medieval Wales named Llewellyn, who's commonly given the nickname of the Last Prince of Wales, since he was the second to last Welsh ruler to ever hold the title. He also had a brother named David, whose death marked the final conquest of Wales by the English king Edward I. Sounds great, right? These must be them, and all the way back in 1832, this seems to have been the idea, as the writer Caradoc of San Carvan claimed that these mountains were named after these princes, as they were used as their temporary retreats during Edward I's conquest. However, there is another famous Llewellyn, who was also the leader of this part of Wales about 40 years earlier. He's commonly called Llewellyn I, owing to the fact that he was the second ruler of Gwynedd named Llewellyn. He's also called the Great, so it's not impossible that this mountain could have been named after him instead, and the historians Owen and Morgan have made the suggestion. Plus, frustratingly, do you want to guess what his son and fellow Welsh ruler was called? That's right, David. We have no idea which one of these is correct, and it could be neither. The name Llewellyn isn't ancient by any means, it first comes up in the 9th century, while the earliest notable David that I could find is the son of a Welsh king who first appears in records in 1157, giving plenty of time for either of these mountains to have been named something else. But just like with so many of these mountains forgotten to time, whatever this was has been completely lost. Hasn't it? Because I, I could have sworn that there was also something else, something important that I had to remember. Maybe if my carbon monoxide alarm would stop beeping, I could finally focus and figure out what it was. Oh. That's right. There's one more burial mound here. The highest mountain in both Wales and its neighbour England. Erwidfa, known in English as Snowdon. Right? <laughs>